What's up, I'm Drew Paul Bell, and today we have a question from our friend Cade Brandon, and he wants to know, uh, when do architecture students start to learn about the building materials used on construction sites? Uh, should you read books about it or what? So this obviously depends from school to school. Different, different schools uh, had this class come up at different times. For me, I think it was second year. This class actually moved around in my education. We had to take it in the summer because it was going to be third year, but then they moved it to second year. Point is, um, I think it's, I don't think I think this is something that doesn't get talked about enough in architecture school, from what I've seen. And again, every school is different. Some schools are more theoretical, and some are more grounded. Mine was supposedly more grounded, but I'm not so sure when, it, when we're looking back at it. I think it kind of shifted. I think, th think things changed. Um, but you're, you're on the right track though. I'm glad you're asking this question because learning that stuff is super important. And the thing about architecture as opposed to most other arts is that architecture, um, it is very much grounded in like left brain thinking and right brain thinking, right? It's this logical kind of function and then also this creative art. And the thing about architecture is that with, with any art you have consequences, right? In music, if you have two sounds that don't resonate, then you have dissonance. You have the, a sound that's painful and you don't want to listen to, right? It sounds awkward, it sounds bad. That's discomforting, right? In architecture, you have to check your designs, not against your ear, but you have to check your designs against reality. You have to check it against your eyes too, right? Because visual, visually, it has to function, it has to look good, but then there's also the real world consequence of is this building going to stand up? Right? And consequences are something that I, I hugely believe in, whether we're talking about learning whatever, learning behaviors, learning education. I think that consequences are something that a lot of people want to shirk on. They want, it, they, they, want, they want the benefit, but they don't want the consequence. Right? They want to design flying buildings, but they don't want the reality of somebody telling them that it's not going to work. They want to go through the world thinking that they just do whatever they want. No one can judge me. But they don't want the consequence of somebody real life in front of their face telling them that what they're doing is stupid. Right? They don't want consequences, but architecture depends on consequences. In order for a building to actually stand up, you have to check it against reality. You have to understand how structures are going to work, how the materials are going to work. This is something, something that you absolutely have to know. So I'm glad that you asked this, but um, let, me, let me try to actually give you something helpful though. Um, I think that, all right, so yeah, there are some books that you could read. The one, the first one I would recommend would be uh, Graphic Standards. So this is the book right here. And we've got, we have drafted drawings. Let's see if we can focus on that, about how a building goes together. This is a reference book, all right? It's not that you were gonna go through and read this, but as you are designing your building, um, this is what you would go check things against. There's literally this chart in here that talks about how many risers you need, uh, and the height, and then the, the run of the stairs that you're gonna have to get. They have information on foundations on basically every section of the CSI master format, right? They have a uh, metal, metal, concrete, wood, construction. They have just a lot of the kind of the, the basic detail what you need to know. It's not every minor detail, like if you need to get like load spans for a particular type of wood, I think that's gonna be somewhere else. But like, this is probably the basics of what you need in terms of checking how your building is going to go together. It's gonna at least get you to the point where uh, I think you could go talk to somebody who is an expert, whether that be a specialist, like an engineer in the professional world, or even like an architect who is more experienced, or your professors who know what they're doing, right? As a student, though, uh, or even as a, as a professional as well, this book is super helpful. And so this is going to help you learn a lot of those materials and figure out kind of what to do. But it's not a book where you're going to sit down and read it. This is a book where you're going to be trying to do something, and to, to check your question, you're going to come here and check it out. So I highly recommended that, Graphic Standards. This is the edition I have, it's the ninth edition. I think that, I heard that the ninth and the tenth editions were the best editions, but I think that everybody is just, they think that the edition they had first is the best edition. So I'm not sure if that's actually true or not, but this is the one that I have and it's full of a lot of information as far as I'm concerned. So there's that. Um, another way that you can learn more about like construction and how buildings go together is to go work construction and if I could go back and do it all over again and, and, and if my summers were free right I had, there's some health things and I, I don't have any regrets but in um, in summers I, 
I would have worked more in construction. I think it would be awesome to have worked construction like one or two summers, maybe at the end of first year and second year, and then go try to get an internship at a um, at like an architecture firm after your fourth year, after your third year or your fourth year. Um, I think that would be an awesome combination. And that's just my theory. I didn't try that out for sure. I did do a little bit of contracting work around Atlanta my um, my last summer, right? Summer bef between my fourth and fifth years. And that gave me a, a good amount of like hands-on knowledge about how, a little bit about how buildings go together. And it wasn't extensive. We weren't building buildings from the ground up. It was a lot of renovation and um, demolition in like basements and stuff like that. But just knowing even like how the job works, how, how a job site works, having a feel for that kind of environment has helped me know a little bit more about the process of architecture and how buildings go together and how it gets built. And it's helped me a lot as I'm sitting in an office in front of my computer doing drawings. So this is a good question that you're asking. I think that uh, that is something that more architects should know and should have a great handle on. It's something that I think school has a hard time teaching because there's something visceral about knowing it, I think. I think it's hard to look at the drawings and hold the idea in your head but not really know what the real thing looks like. I think that's really hard. And school is so academic, it's so mental that you're almost always sitting in a classroom and instead of getting your hands dirty for real, and I think it's difficult to learn anything real that way. I think it's best to learn with getting your hands dirty and learning it by doing it. So, so that would be my recommendation. Um, I'll also recommend a book that they had us buy for school anyway was uh, Building Construction Illustrated or Building Structures Illustrated. Uh, anything by Frank Ching um, has pretty good illustrations about how buildings go together and that can help you out as, a lot as well. So. So this is my piece of advice for you. I hope that this helps you. This, is a, this will help you learn more about how buildings go together. And this is something that you do need to know. And it's something that I'm not sure if school ever really teaches you 100% of what you need. But as I've said before, don't let schooling get in the way of your education. Take control of this and you learn it. Um, you try learning it however you think you can. Okay, so I hope this helps. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video, and I will talk to you next time.